you want to ask any question, you are most welcome. Maharaji, yes, I'm, please. I'm asking this question on behalf of a satsangi in our group. He says, you have told us in the books that we should concentrate at, and do our Simran at the third eye. And at satsang you very often point to the third eye. Now you also say that we should just close our eyes and be there in the darkness and repeat our Simran there. And he would like to know which of the two is correct. Sister, both are correct. There is no particular spot which I can point out that this is a place where third eye has to open. Third eye means the faculty to see within. So we should keep our, we should not try to find any particular spot in the darkness and try to concentrate at that particular spot. That is wrong. It will strain our eyes. We should just keep our attention in the darkness here and go on doing several along with dhyan if possible. Automatically we will come where we have to come. Concentration automatically will be there where it should be before that faculty to see will open. And you can call it third eye, whatever name you want to give it. Third eye, the word is used from that point of view because two eyes see outside and that faculty sees within. So we call it third eye. There is no eye like these eyes there. Anything we see is that light within, that is third eye. So there is no particular spot which you have to find or which you have to locate in order to concentrate there. You just keep your attention in the darkness here and go on doing your simra. Automatically you will come where you should be. When the con concentration is complete, automatically you will start seeing within. The flashes will be there, the light will be there, it will start becoming brighter and brighter. And that is opening of the third eye. Thank you, Maharaji. Yes, please. Uh, Master, like many disciples, I'm sure, I think I'll always want to know more about you. And it's, it's coming here to India has been such a beautiful experience and getting to know you personally. Sometimes you look like a brother with so much nobility and so much, so much love and a, and, a, and a dear father who cares for his children. And I don't know how much of it is imagination, but sometimes you seem to be so full of light and musical sound. And thirdly, and perhaps mostly of all, sometimes I see this very exceedingly gentle and beautiful person that is obviously from the highest region, the Radhaswami region, which is so, and it's so beautiful to see you that way. And wanting to know more about you, could, is there any way you could express in, in, in the simplest terms, maybe, of a description of how you see yourself or what is our true home, the Radha Swami region, like? Perhaps in a few simple Brother, words. Brother, I'm just like you. I am doing my allotted job. Left to me, I would have been loved to be there where you are sitting. I'm just like you, we are all struggling soul, knocking at the same gate. And it depends entirely on His grace and love and devotion. And don't raise me too high, I'm just one of you people. Master, other, other Masters have, have made descriptions to their disciples. Is there, is there any way that in your own words, maybe just a few words, you could say something about the highest region, which is our, our true home? Well, these words are meaningless to describe those things. Let us do our job and try to go there and experience ourselves. These all words are meaningless. Radhe Swami. 
Yes, yes. Maharaji, I have two questions I'd like to ask. But first, I'd like to say thank you to Mr. Babani for the lovely words he's shared with us during this session. The first question that I have has to do with making progress in meditation. Yesterday, you explained to us that for each disciple, progress in meditation is a, a function of our effort, of your grace, of past sanskaras. However, I, I'm aware that at times we can make progress in our meditation without being aware of the fact that we're making that progress. Is that because if we were conscious of our progress, let me reword that, is that because we are not necessarily fit or mature enough to be able to integrate that inner experience with our outer lives? Sister, there can be many reasons. When we are pouring a thick wall, we cannot see through unless that piercing is right through. Then only you can see the light on the other side. So we have to pierce through thick layer of clouds of karma before we can realize how much we have been able to achieve and how much little is left to see that light. The second question that I have is a little different. Does the inner form of the Master have as lovely a sense of humor as yourself? No, this is how we take life. Whether we take it very seriously and howl and cry on very minor things, or we just accept it as it comes, and like to take it smilingly, everything. This, is, this depends upon our own attitude towards life. There's nothing much to weep about in this creation. And then nothing is worth weeping in this creation, I can assure you. And if we can't get it, let us laugh over it and pass through this world. Yes, that elderly gentleman is waiting since long. Yes, please. Thank you, Master, for being with you. Um, there's been a burning question with me for many years. <clears throat> um, the opportunity, this time you asked if you have any questions, but you failed to say, or can we, or if you anything with to discuss. Now, I have not a question. I just have, I like to discuss the pain of separation. Uh, <clears throat> There are many forms of the pain of separation. There is loneliness, lonesomeness, there is even jealousy or the pain of falling in love. Um, they all have a similar pain. And it has been coming to the surface with me for many years. And uh, I wish you would uh, make a small discussion on it or how we can alleviate those pains. Once those pains attack you, there's no way of doing any meditation or any concentration. Brother, definitely there's a great pain even in jealousy. In jealousy there's a sense of possession which we like to possess and do not want another person to possess. So there is selfishness in that love. This is no love. Love is giving, not taking. Love is submission, not making another person submit to your whims. The pleasure lies in giving, in submitting, rather than possessing anything. It's the pleasure to be possessed, rather than to possess. So love for the Lord is just submission, giving, merging into Him, merging into the Lord. There's no sense of possessing Him. So there's no jealousy in the love of Lord. Rather the fellow beings comes closer to us when we love the Lord. When we find somebody loving the Lord, 
they become much more closer to us than our own kith and kins, because there is no jealousy in this love, because we are all giving and submitting. We are not trying to possess Him, we are trying to be possessed by Him. So there is a difference in this worldly love and the love for the Lord. Of course, pain of separation is always there, but there is a certain pleasure in that pain which we will, will not like to part at any cost. That is our life, that pain, that pleasure of separation. We exist on that pain of separation. And we will not like to part with that pain of separation. There's a, there's a great pleasure in it, great peace in it. Though it looks sometimes torturing, but still we will not like to get rid of that. Right now I'm going through the um, pains of rejection, age rejection. And it's a very, very real pain, and it's the same thing. Um, <clears throat> it's hard to explain, but there is a definite separation between youth and senior, being senior, and that separation is brought to the foreground all the time. And um, the, as I say, that's a real pain, and it has nothing to do with possession or brother. Love for the Master or love for the Lord, there's no rejection in it. There's always acceptance in it. Our love is never rejected. Actually, He is the one who is pulling us from inside. He is the one who is making us receptive to that pull. He is the doer. He is the puller. We feel we love. Actually, He is the one who is loving us, who is pulling us, who is creating that feeling of separation in us. Maharaji, but I would like to ask you, does Akal Purush come into Kali Yuga? Kal Purush? Does Akal Purush manifest himself during Kali Yuga? What do you mean by Kal Purush manifesting? Kal is sitting right within every one of us. Uh, maybe I should rephrase it. Does Radha Swami Himself manifest into Kali Yuga? Lord is always there in this creation. Radha Swami is the Lord. Kal is the mind. I the mind, is, mind is within every one of us. The Lord is within every one of us. I believe it says in Sarvachan, and I cannot quote the exact thing, that uh, during Kali Yuga, Radha Swami Himself comes down in the form of a human being to take the jivas back. What, what it means is that in Kali Yuga, the Lord is always coming down to the creation in one form or another, form of a saint or a form of a mystic. Kali Yuga is never without saints. Thank you very much, Radha Swami. When I, at times when I feel some despair, um, the meditation is not as fervent as I'd like it to be. Um, and I would like it to be more fervent. I would like to, to feel more powerful, more in, intense. Is there any suggestion to make that even stronger? Well, brother, knock, 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 knock. There's no other way except knocking it will automatically be opened. Thank you so much. Yes, brother. <coughs> Master, the real home of the soul is Radha Swami Dham. We emanated once from there, and now we are here in a physical body, in a physical world. We meet a saint, and he promises us he will bring us back. Now my question. When we once emanated from there, what <coughs> could it happen again when we will return? I mean, since we have been sent back from the Father, and where is the guarantee that we will not sent back again once we go back to Him? Yes. Well, it's worth asking Him when we go back to Him. I mean, what guarantee can we give 
on this mortal at this level he is all powerful he can do whatever he likes but at least saints assure us that once we are one with him we will not be sent back again but we cannot put lay any conditions over him and who are we the main thing is to let us go back to him thank you yes master um christians have a prayer called the lord's prayer and in it um there's a phrase thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and when i hear this prayer i think of you and i also question myself what sister what is the meaning of these words thy will be done as thy will in heaven what is the meaning of these exact words how do you interpret it well what i question is how often no it, i like to know the meaning of these phrase <laughs> thy will your will um, no no forget my will or the will <laughs> i want to know the christian meaning of this phrase that everything that happens in the creation is a part of your plan sister whatever you have written in my destiny i'll be happy to go through this that destiny while being on this earth that is the meaning of these words and that we all accept and that we all going through whatever you have written in heaven whatever you have written in our forehead or whatever our destiny is we like to go through it smilingly through our destiny everybody is born with a certain destiny and we have to go through that destiny The purpose of meditation is that we should go through the destiny without losing our balance smilingly happily Every day I discuss events of life cannot be changed we have to go through it but we have to change our attitude in such a way that those events of life don't affect our mind at all so that the destiny we pass through smilingly If you thoroughly try to understand the meaning, this is what it is. And there's nothing wrong with it, but there's no sense in repeating these words every day. We should understand them and live accordingly. That is more important. That's what I want to do, Master, to be, to live in your will and accept the destiny. Thank you. Yes. You can put it on, you see this mic. Uh Father, please tell me why I am again not present when you came to the meals in the park. Why you were not there? This time I sat in meditation in the hotel. Then And now I'm little You were sad. doing much better. than what they were doing there but i am here to see your physical why do you want to repent about it you should be happy i must send you a lot of greetings from my husband thank you thank you please thank you did the people in those other ages also need perfect masters to go back to the lord Christ says since the creation of this world till the end of the creation a comma cannot be changed in the teaching a full stop cannot be added nothing can be changed in the teaching every mistake tells the same thing harping on the same tune there no other way to go back to the father teaching always have remained the same and this will always remain the same every mistake is harping on the same tune every mistake comes with the same spiritual truth to share with us no mistake brings any new teaching for us any other shortcut for us 
It is the same teaching which they explain to us. Sometimes they lay emphasis on certain things, sometimes they lay emphasis on a certain thing according to our background. Their way, their approach may be different. Their way of explaining us may be different with our background, with our intellect, intellectual background. But the basic teaching cannot be changed. It has got to be the same. Yes, I understand. Thank you. Master, um, I was wondering, I've been on the path for about almost 12 years now, and it seems like uh, even though my meditation isn't really that great, I mean, I think I try, but it's, it seems especially difficult to do Dion. I have uh, some success at doing Simran, but it seems like Dion is a lot harder to do than Simran is. You want to know then why Dhyan is difficult? Why? Well, why is it harder to do Dhyan than it is to do Simran? You see, <clears throat> even if you cannot contemplate on the form of the Master, you should keep your attention in the darkness here, in the forehead. Keeping your attention there, you can repeat the Simran. Even this will help you to hold your attention there. Dhyan is not must. It is a great help to a devotee to hold his attention at the eye center. Or you can feel that your master is sitting right at the eye center and you are doing Simran in his presence. That also helps you to be there from where you are doing your Simran. And when you get start seeing the flashes of light, then they automatically hold your attention there. And then that Dhyan becomes easier when you see some object there, that divine light there. Then it becomes easier to hold the attention there. But why, why is it easier to repeat the names, to actually repeat the names, but it's it's more difficult to visualize the face of the Master even though you've seen the Master. It's not only a question of seeing the Master. We are so much attached to the worldly faces, worldly objects. To detach ourselves from them and to attach any holy face, it's not so easy. Dhyan means automatically our attention goes to the one we love. We don't have to put any effort to visualize him. People we love, people we are attached to, you don't find any difficult to visualize their faces. But when mind is attached to so many other faces, so many other objects of life, so naturally it's difficult to visualize on the form of the Master. True. Thank you. Yes. Sweet Lord, I talked to you the last time in 1973. I didn't make much sense then. I hope I'll make more sense now. Recently, you sent an answer to me, and in that an the letter, you used the words. Do your meditation with faith in the Master and belief in yourself. I have just a glimpse of what the faith in the Master means, but what did you mean by faith in yourself? Have faith in your own self. You have confidence in yourself. Self. And I also came up here to see you more clearly. Most welcome. Radha Swami. Um, in this morning's discourse, I thought I heard the words in English, income tax and sales tax. I thought you mentioned those words, and I was wondering <laughs> what the context was. Well, brother, attention on the mind. The context was in connection with the tension of the mind. 
that we can never get peace of mind or happiness in this world, no matter how much wealth we earn. But there will always be tension of our mind, some problem of collecting that mind, holding that wealth, dealing with that wealth will always be there. Some time of income tax problem, some time of sale tax problem, I don't know about your country. Here, there's a lot of, you see, black money. So people don't declare their full incomes. They don't declare their full uh, sales tax. So there are always raids on them, and they are harassed by the government. So what is the use of that wealth? They can't, I mean, they don't get happiness from that wealth when they're always fearing the income tax rates and sale tax rates and about that hoarded money. So there's always a tension in spite of the fact that they have earned so much money. So even the money hasn't brought any happiness to them. In that connection I was probably referring. Thank you, Master. <coughs> Father Swami, Father, at first I would like to thank you that again I am here in India with you and I thank you for all your presence. But I have a wish from my heart and I request you to fulfill this wish. I beg you to manifest the Lord in me, really. I'm, I'm ready uh, to pay every, uh, every price for this. We don't need any price at all. We don't want you to sacrifice anything at all. What's your question? You come out with the open question. This is no question, this is a, a wish from me. Just attend to your meditation, don't worry. Leave everything to the Father. Please, Guruji. Thank you. Could you tell us any other thing um, that you'd like to tell us from the morning satsang? <laughs> The gist of the morning satsang is that there is no happiness in this creation. Neither in a family life, nor in the children, nor in the wealth, nor in the social position, nor in the power. You, no matter, even if you rule the whole world, you will not get the real peace in this creation at all. Because tendency and inclination of the soul is always towards its own origin. So unless this goes back to the father, question of soul getting a peace in this creation doesn't arise at all. These are temporary, you see, pleasures, and their reaction is horrible, terrible. The more we try to see pleasure in this creation, the more miserable we are becoming every day. The more frustrated we feel every day. That is why so many mental asylum, so many diseases and sicknesses, mental sicknesses, so many suicides which never had used to be had before. Because we are trying to seek pleasure in this creation, in this world. So we are in the wrong direction for the search of peace. Real peace we can only attain from within when we go towards our own original goal, our destination, that is Father. And then I was trying to say that this world is of good and bad karmas. Our good karmas also bring us here, our bad karmas also bring us here. Due to our past good karmas, so we are happy sometimes. Due to our past bad karmas, we are miserable sometimes. And this life is a combination of good and bad. So sometimes we are laughing, sometimes we are miserable. So this, you see, events, a cycle always go in this creation. We cannot change the events of our life. We have to go along with the events of our life. We should try to adjust to the events of our life, because they will not change. But we should change. If you say, Winter should not come, winter will have to come. Summer should not come, summer will have to come. But if we prepare for the winter, prepare for the summer, they will pass. So effect of good karma also has to come, effect of bad karma also has to come, and we have to face through both of them. 
So we should always be prepared to face the situations, accept the situations, and not be affected by them. But we can't change the events of our life. They are already written. We have already to undergo. Our destiny is already set. And no matter what we do, we cannot change. So we cannot seek permanent happiness in this creation at all. Real happiness is in the lap of the Father. So we try to search our destination, our goal. So Swamiji was explaining about the relationship of the world with our family, our children, our mothers, our sisters, our neighbors, our friends. He said they are all players on the stage. As every player come on the stage, and they have a certain part to play, and after that when they get down, they have no relationship with each other at all. So this is also a big play. We have been given certain part to play as a wife, as a husband, as a friend, as an enemy. So we get so absorbed, so loves of our past life, romances of our past life. Naturally we are going to forget these one too, for which we are so anxious to have. For those, you see, for whom we spend sleepless nights even today, we will also forget them in the next birth. We have not been able to keep, you see, in our mind the past affections, past loves, past attachments. We are not going to keep these two also. So these, these are all, we are playing part on this stage. So we should behave like an actor in this world, rather than be involved with the play. Then he was giving example, you have a tank full with water. If you have one outlet, open it, slowly and slowly the whole water will be drained out. So similarly our body is full with the breathing, you see. So we have breathing day and night, but we forget that day when the breathing will stop, then this body will not function. And all relation will come in no time, from nowhere. And they have loved so much, they are not willing to keep even for the night at home. I think he has become probably an evil spirit. At night he may not haunt us. Let us dispose of him, you see, during the daytime. Nobody is like to, wants to sit even at night with the dead body. He said, this is our relationship of the world. People break. You see, I don't know about your, your country, you put some I mean, um, handful of dust in the grave. Just what you are to me, just as the dust is to me, so you are to me, for which we have done so much in this world. So it has just become a dust for us. And in India, you see, we, we, we break this small piece of wood. Just as this wood has broken, so our relationship for our forever is broken. He says, in no time we become strangers. For whom you are so much bothering about, and weeping and crying and howling, for whom, for what? It's not going to last you forever. So you have forgotten the real purpose of life, for which the Lord has given you this human birth. Try to achieve that. And then he says that Shabad and Naam is vibrating within every one of us. Unless you come to the eye center and attach yourself to the Shabad and Naam, you cannot be pulled beyond the realm of mind and maya. The only thing which can drag us out of the mind and maya is the Shabad, which the Lord has kept within every one of us. And then Swamiji was explaining that we are so much involved in this creation that we have forgotten even the real aim of our life. We have forgotten our death even, that we have to die. We think death is only for others, not for us at all. He said, don't forget, you also will have to face. The people, those who have died, have not been able to take any wealth or anything from this creation. You think you will be able to take anything from this creation? If people could take anything from this creation, nothing would come to our share. People would have taken everything from this creation. All wealth, all money. Nothing would have been left to our share. So we have collected we have got it from here, we are going to leave everything here. No matter whether you leave ten million dollars, or one million dollars, or ten dollars. It makes hardly any difference when you die. So nothing goes with you. 
So Swamiji was explaining from that point of view. And uh, then he says, how you can be in touch with the Shabbat? He says, only with Simran and Dhyan. Unless you come to the eye center, you cannot enjoy the bliss and peace of that Shabbat. So that is the only way to withdraw your attention to the eye center. The easiest way is by Simran and Dhyan. Then he says, you have enjoyed life so much all these years drinks and merrymaking and dancing and what not. If till yet you could not get happiness in life from all these things, you think you are go- in the rest of your life you'll be able to seek happiness in these things? They make you more miserable every day. So he says your search is absolute in a wrong direction. If you want to search for happiness that is within you, that you can only achieve when you are attached to the Shabbat and Naam within, when you are going towards your own destination. The more nearer and nearer you are to your destination, the more happier and happier you become. He said, that is the only way, you see, he said, you can achieve your goal. So his main emphasis was not to be attached to this, anything in this creation, and always remain your goal before your eyes, and always keep your attention attached to the Shabd and Naam within. Rest is only interpretation, explanation. Okay? (laughs) Thank you. Master, you have told this soul to let the time come, and you have also told this humble seeker that seekers must be, Western seekers must be initiated in their own country. Explain the wisdom of this procedure to me so all doubt may disappear. How will you know us from an application? Pardon? How do you know us from an application? There's no question of knowing, only those will come who have been marked to come. It's not for me to know at all. It's not for you to know at all. You will be dragged. A master will be helpless to initiate. (laughs) The wire is in somebody else's hand. The marking is somebody else's hand. The one who is pulling is someone sitting behind the curtain. Sheep sheep are marked for certain shepherds. Christ said, when I whistle, my sheep recognize my voice. When mystics and saints come, those marked for them automatically surround them, no matter where they are. They don't need any advertisement. They will automatically be drawn to him, and shepherd has no power to refuse them. Whether there is any application or not, it is immaterial, they are just organization formalities for record. Then, Master, what is meant by let the time come and why are seekers from the Western world initiated in their country? When they come here, it's why more then? convenient. It's more convenient. More convenient. And what is meant by let the time come, Master? Everybody has a marked time to come. And that is the time. Thank you very much. You see, when his time comes, all these questions are automatically dissolved. His all doubts are automatically vanish. He will automatically be drawn. Till his time comes, he may be living uh, living next door neighbor. He may not feel at all. When his time comes, he will automatically be drawn, running, pulling. He will be pulled and running towards you when his time comes. He can't resist. The pull. Without his time, he may be living even the next door. He will not even care to listen to you. So marking is there and marking is also for the time. What time he is to be initiated? Maharaji, I like to meditate in the evening because I can hold my concentration better. In the morning I fall asleep. Except I have horrible dreams, a lot, not always, but very disturbing dreams. When I meditate at night and then go to sleep, will that pass? 
after a time? Sisters, there's no particular time for meditation. Any time we suits you, try to make use of that time. There are certain advantages in the morning time. That differs with individuals also. Because in the morning, generally our body is fresh. We have forgotten all the ups and downs of the last day. Our thoughts are not scattered. Children are sleeping. There is no, not much hustle and bustle in the streets. So when we are going to start a day, why not in the name of the Lord, so that the atmosphere we built in meditation, we can live in that for the whole day. That is the only advantage. Mm-hmm. If we cannot make use of that time, any time is good for meditation. No time is wrong for meditation. But the fact that I, when I go to sleep after meditation and I have very intense, very bizarre dreams, and then the next day I'm thinking about these dreams, will that pass after a dream, while? Dream generally one forgets, and don't try to analyze them, don't try to think about them, let them forget. Okay. Forget them, forget those dreams. Okay, thank you, Mahavis. A master, when the soul returns to his source in Sajkahan, though he still has his individual personality, who would like to retain individuality rather than to become a god? When a drop goes to an ocean, he would like to remain a drop or an ocean. He is also a drop there, he is also an ocean there. You pick out, it's a drop. You throw it, it's a sea. So therefore he's no more then? Master, that Shabbat of Guru Arjun was very beautiful and the timing on it for the trip to Dara is quite meaningful for me in that uh, there are poles of work. My rational mind says, well, you've got to go back and fulfill these obligations. And I know that in the teachings there's a lot of emphasis on working and providing your own resources for your brother, existence. Brother, you must fulfill your obligations and naturally I can imagine you have not taken long leaves to come and you shouldn't try, not try to run away from your responsibilities, from your jobs, because you will be getting more opportunities to come. It's not the only opportunity to go to Bias. Now since it has been opened and we are building more and more, so it will be easier to come to Bias. So if some of you cannot go, you should not feel bad at all. After very few months again, it will be open. Thank you very much. Maharaji, I will request you to discuss briefly meditation as a prayer. Well, brother, prayer doesn't mean to repeat set words. Prayer should be from the heart. No matter what type of prayer it may be, but any prayer gives us mental consolation to face the situation. Prayer never changes events of our life. Prayer never changes our destiny that we have to go through. It may give us strength, moral strength, strong will power to face the situation. Prayer doesn't change the situation, the events of life. The real prayer is meditation. The real prayer is to the Father to forgive us, but stand between us and the Father to forgive us. Unless that is forgiven, no soul can go back to the Father. That is why Christ said, repent, kingdom of God is within you. To repent for what? What has a child done to repent? He has just taken birth, but he doesn't see the Father within. Repent what we have done in the past lives, the karmas or the sins which we have been collecting in every life. Unless we repent for all those, they stand in our way <coughs> in, to, see, to the Father. So unless we are able to repent for them, or we are able to clear those karmas, or rise above those karmas, we cannot go back to the Father. 
So real prayer is meditation. Meditation only helps us to repent for the past because we don't know what we have done. Unless we are conscious, how can we repent? Unless we are conscious what we have done in the past, we are, see, naturally we can't repent. And we don't know what we have been doing in the past. So the real repentance is attending to our meditation. Meditation itself is a prayer to the Lord. It's a knocking, it's a begging to the Lord to forgive us. Otherwise, what can our poor little meditation can do? <coughs> meditation creates our attitude towards our own home, to our own destination. It creates a tendency for us to go back to our own home. It creates a consciousness in our mind that we have got to go back to our father. And that is what is more essential. So real meditation is the prayer. Because even without our praying the Lord, prayer, the Lord knows what we need. If He can fulfill our desires, He can also understand and know what our desires are. He doesn't need asking at all. You have a maid working in the house, if she is diligently working, lovingly working, and very obedient in his behavior and duty, we are always anxious to give her more and more, some gifts more and more. If she doesn't work at all, always grumbling for the increase, would you like to get rid of her? So, you see, we should be a humble devotee of the Father. We should accept what He gives us, and we should just attend to our meditation. Meditation itself is a prayer, nothing else but a prayer. Meditation is a real prayer. It helps us to go through our destiny cheerfully. It helps us not to sow any more seeds for the future. And it destroys all the old seeds which we have sown. So meditation is the main thing. Another question, Master. All saints have stressed much on doing meditation. But unfortunately, despite the fact that all the souls are looking towards going back to their father or their origin, we find it very, very, very difficult to attend to our meditation. I'm asking Master, why is it very, very difficult to search our true home? Well, brother, we have parted from our real home, true home, since ages. And we have even forgotten our real home. So, mind is so attached to this creation, so attached to this, you see, non-real homes, are to this creation, the object and the faces of this creation, and the player of the senses, it doesn't want to leave them. So that is why it is difficult to detach our mind from all these things and to go back to our own home. It's not so easy. Philosophy, to understand Santmat philosophy is very easy. To follow it is very, very difficult. Nothing new in the Santmat philosophy. Every mistake has been explaining us the same thing, same spiritual truth they share with us. But it's diff difficult naturally to follow it. But there's no other way. We've got to knock at the door. Because we have no other alternative. Thank you, Master. I'm one of your new initiates. Thank you very much for all your grace. Uh, I am not so clear about when to sit for bhajan. We are told to sit for Simran two-thirds of a time and one-third for a button. But if you are not able to concentrate the mind, is it not a waste of time to sit for a button until you can? Sister, it is no waste of time at all. We have to create habit of sitting in meditation also. Yes. Sitting in bhajan posture also. Yes, I see. So, <laughs> I just wanted to make clear. You Which can give more time to Simran, less time to Shabbat. Yes. But you should give definitely some time 
Shabbat, so that you may get into the habit of hearing the Shabbat. Oh, I understand that. Thank you very much for your grace. Hi, Master. Uh, I just spent two days in my hotel room uh, sick, and I just want to thank you for the extra bed rest. I guess I must have needed it. <laughs> it was, I came late today. I had to take a taxi to get here by 4 o'clock. I just made it in time. But uh, a couple of times during the last few days, when I had the fever and I was sick to my stomach, I got angry for coming halfway around the world to get here, and then I was sick. And uh, in the end, my sense of humor came back, and now I feel pretty graceful about it. So I guess uh, all's well, that's end well that ends well. So. I'm glad you are taking in their spirit. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to see you up close too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Master, I understand before creation we were all a part of the Creator. And my question is, at what point did we break away, and why, if we were all equal, are some pieces building different karma than other pieces? Or why would we not have all the same karma? Well, sister, how can we have the same type of karmas? When you see this building, all bricks can't be put in the foundation. Some bricks have to come to the in the wall, some bricks have to be in the ceiling, some at the top. Then only this whole building can be constructed. So if this creation is to continue, there are so many parts to be played by people, so they have to be fitted in their own parts. Then only this creation can continue. Thank you, Master. Um, I'm confused. You say that um, everything in the world is illusion. Shabbat is real, Nam is real, okay? So I'm not real. Who says you're not real? I thought I read in the books that we were all illusion. You say we are puppets. The puppet is a different thing, illusion is something different. Puppet and illusion is not the same thing. In essence, we're shot. Potentially, every one of us is God, yes. not the question of illusion. Okay. Every soul potentially is a god. So I'm Shabbat walking around pretending that I'm Linda. Yes. And you're... <laughs> okay. And you're Shabbat pretending that you're Charan Singh. Give any interpretation. Well, what I don't understand, sir, is it's so easy for us to be pulled to come see you in the physical, you know? But it's so hard for me to fill that pole to see you inside. And it's inside which is real, isn't that so? Yes. Real in the sense that that is a permanent thing, which can always stay with us. So, so what is this game that, that I come to India and we go to Dara and you what know. we really want to do is go inside? You know best. Well. Why did you come? That is for you to decide, why did you come? To see you. Then, why are you asking me all this question? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>